So James Schleicher, I'm president of IBB Inc. IBB stands for I've Been Burned. So what I've been doing basically the last 11 years for work, um, I couldn't find a job out of college. And I'll kind of dive a little more into that. So it was, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. So um, again, you're in this room because you're leaders. You've proven that you are able to overcome the odds. You're able to um, you know, basically fight the things that come at you. So that's definitely, you know, I wish I could say I, I planned all this out. This was, you know, this is, was all exact. Um, my book's called It All Starts With a Plan. And it's kind of funny because nothing went according to plan. Um, but the uh, main thing is I'm hoping that when I'm talking about the power of one, it sounds cliche. It sounds, you know, it's all that old leadership, blah, blah, blah. But I just kind of tell you my story about how it really took one person to really change my life forever. Um, I'm hoping that um, you know, I can help you realize that that one person a lot of times is, is, is you, is the person staring back in the mirror. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. So, but uh, yeah, if you want to. OK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. See, I am lost without you. Can you all just give it up for Jenny. <laughs> give it up. All right, very good. So, first things first, um, thank you. And if any of you um, are military or are in the services that protect us, um, basically, we're not here talking about our leadership problems if we don't have people protecting them. Um, and then, obviously, Jenny, you and your team, thank you. Uh, so, you go next. And then, I'm going to have, like, it's my son, JJ, throughout the. Try to keep it lively, like family, friends throughout the thing. Um, but you know, like I said, today's about you. My goal is that um, a lot of what I'm gonna say is gonna sound cliche, but I need you to know that I believe it more than anything in life, and that you're the all, you're already the all stars, uh, big Batman nerd. Someone's like, be the vigilante of Lake County, and uh, and to take care of each other, because leadership is a lonely, lonely, lonely road most of the time. And so just help each other overwhelm the negativity with positivity. Um, one of the things, and I'll get more into it, is success without happiness is not success. And for me, um, I say it's called checking the success box. So some of you may have come into this being like, all right, well, this will look good on my resume. Or this might get me ready for the promotion, or whatever it might be. So um, my question real quick is, can success be a trap? Yes, OK. Cool, all right, yes. Bonus points, bonus points, extra credit. All right, so uh, go ahead, next. Um, so basically, the goal, that's uh, our buddy, he's actually from Willoughby, but he's with uh, WWE Wrestling now. Um, but he is someone that has had to endure a lot. So we talked about having one idea and putting that one idea into action over a long, EC3. I don't know if no, you're good, it's all good, man. <laughs> he works out, um, but the, uh, basically, um, <laughs> And the, one, the one thing, too, I challenge you to do is really what, what has gotten you to this point? What has gotten you the privilege of being in the seat you're in and being recognized for what you're doing? Um, you know, kind of my three things that I've stuck to is love others always. And mom and dad, thanks to them, have taught me, you know, even when you're furious, still give everybody a big bear hug. Um, so loving people no matter what, working insanely hard no matter what, um, the one thing that I always believed was, hey, I don't have all the talent in the world. I'm not as skilled. And like I said, I got into my industry on accident. Um, but I believe that, hey, I will outwork the talent. I will outwork the, you know, whatever natural things come to people, or maybe that they're better off than I am. They have more connections. They have more whatever. So again, never, never let what other people have determine what you're going to get. Um, and then taking pride in both, that's one thing that all of you in this room, I'm sure, at one time, someone has asked you. And usually that lazy friend or that lazy family member is like, why are you doing the, the, what, the builders? You're building, what, you're involved in the community? Like, what's the point? Like, like why, why, would, why do you care, right? Have you ever, has anybody ever asked you, why do you care? Maybe, <laughs> maybe care harder, get no, no, but, uh, um, but the biggest thing is, is I felt guilty for working hard. And I felt, you know, there's a lot of times the whole IBB story is I've been burned. So I'm constantly in a state of fury <laughs> and trying to take <laughs> vengeance on, you know, again, not letting anybody else get taken advantage like my family did. But 
yes, that's my key to success. You know, I always say your, one of your greatest blessings is always your greatest curse if, you, if you're not careful. Um, so for me, a lot of times I have to catch myself getting all riled up about, and again, good passion. You know, think about, like, I'm sure you know great leaders, great coaches, great, I mean, especially in the sports world where you, you, everything, you know, you see these coaches acting like insane people. And, but it's just in that moment, you know, the, the leader goes out the window and the emotion takes over. So, um, you know, really take pride in those things. Um, you go next. All right, so repeat after me, all right? There's going to be some activities. Um, I can, I will help one more person take action and find happiness. Hooray. All right, cool. Uh, next. And so again, now that I've rambled on, um, more about me. I'm just punk kid from Lake County, and that's again. <laughs> it's me hanging out with grandma. She got me a cool Batman hat. Um, and she, as you can see, she loves Kohl's. So you see, like, discount. She got me the coat and the hat. She's like, I paid $4 for it. You know, so, but uh, um, cotton fields and coal mines. So again, talking about how we, we have the gift of opportunity. We have, we have the opportunity to sit around and complain about, oh, well, my, you know, so-and-so this, so-and-so that. But my grandma grew up sundown, sun up to sundown picking cotton. And she took a huge risk coming to Cleveland and hoping that it would work out so that I can Come, you know, I'm living my dream right now because she gave up literally just about everything to, to make a better life for a grandkid she didn't even know. Um, homeschool till seventh grade, a lot of people say that explains a lot. Um, but uh, the, I got three younger brothers, um, and my mom and dad, basically the golden rule in Bambi. So the golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated. In Bambi, um, where uh, the thumper, the little rabbit, says, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. And that's usually because me and my brothers are about to kill each other over Legos or Ninja Turtles. But um, went to Wilby South. My big thing that, again, where it's, you look back at your life and say, OK, what, and we'll talk a little more about this. How did I get here? Like, what has really driven me to this point? And for me, it was being a fat kid trying to lose weight for football. And then I wasn't fast, so I couldn't be a sprinter. I couldn't jump, so I couldn't jump high jump and track. And I went to throw shot put, and I went like two feet. And uh, so I'm like, OK, what else is there? So I was a long distance runner. Um, but everybody said I can never beat this one kid. Super nice guy. One of the best human beings I've ever met. But my whole life revolved around beating him. And I beat him, and I'm OK, well, now what? But I ended up breaking a couple of school records. But the whole what I took away from high school is tell me I can't and I will. You know, so that's my dare, my challenge. I'm here to tell you, you can't be better. I'm here to tell you that you can't be a better leader and that you can't build bridges, that you can't impact your community. And I hope that's, you know, I, I want you thinking of all those voices that make you question your purpose. OK? Um, Notre Dame College, not the real Notre Dame College, the fake one. Um, but expect success, but understand failure. Everybody thought, like, yeah, fighting Irish. I'm like, fighting Falcons. <laughs> like, South Bend, ah, South Euclid. So, um, but uh, the expect success, but understand. So I went there, again, like I said, my, my, I went there to run track. Talk about a terrible decision to go to college for, to run track. Um, and the main thing, I, I, I messed up my hip really bad. And I completely lost my identity. So a lot of times, too, you know, as you're transitioning in, in life, you know, it's, you don't, no, nobody, you, know, you don't wake up one day and be like, you know what, I just really don't have a sense of identity anymore, you know? I just really lost that. But my whole life revolved around one thing, and that one thing went away. And I was very depressed. My parents went through a divorce. Just really, just kind of everything started to crumble. You know, and there's way worse things than what I was going through. But again, it, everything's all relative to you. So, you know, Coming out of college, I was able to be president of student government. I was, you know, I was able to uh, be editor in the newspaper. I, I did a lot of things that I would never have done had things gone according to plan. So that's been one thing that has helped guide me as well. Is I will expect the success, but I will understand that it's going to take me 300 times to get it right. So then, <laughs> so double major, double minor, and no job. And Lucky enough that my grandma, again, so she's like, OK, I'd pick cotton so you can go to college and find no job, right? <laughs> Thanks, James. 
real, real, real promising grandson here. Um, but so I was living in grandma's basement. I had $18 to my name in my checking, 50 grand in student loan debt. And um, I used to, my car used to break down in potential clients' driveways that would, they'd never call back. And just a uh, surprise. Um, but I made a vow to myself that I don't know how, I don't know when, but some time in the future, I'll be successful. I won't be ashamed of the identity that I now have of the guy with no job in grandma's basement. Okay? Definitely at that time, I was ashamed. And that's where you know, I would ask you to really challenge your own self. Am I, am I ashamed at what I'm going through in my, in my life? Am I ashamed of who I am for the wrong reason? Because a lot of stuff that I was ashamed of before, now I like, take pride in it. Like, yeah, I was in grandma's basement. I wasn't handed anything. Um, but now I'm very fortunate. I'm top 6% in the world in what I do. So, and that's been the last four years. And another thing, don't let the thought of success stress you out and scare you to the point where you don't go for it. And a lot, when I'm out doing these talks, and a lot of when I'm, we're consulting and we're coaching and we're speaking to different people. Um, in Cancun, I was at a, a leaders meeting for our, for our firm, and that people come up like, you know, everybody's afraid of success. And I know I was too, because it's not about hitting it once. So if you are successful in 2018, what is the expectation for 2019? You gotta do it again or get better. And you're like, come on, man. I said my best year, and now it's not good enough. You know? so, so don't let the thought of having this, if you do it right, you can stay there forever. OK? Um, next. So success without happiness. So Greg Devan, I don't know if any of you know him, grew up playing Little League, uh, baseball with him. And he is my one person. And so I got to talk about success being a track. Year and a day, got promoted management. I had seven people working for me. And on paper, I was a success. On paper, I had checked every box. You know, college, check. Career, check. Management, check. Yeah. I'm going to be a boss, tell people what to do. Um, so I was miserable. You know, as we want to talk about, like, I thought this was it. I thought this is when all my problems went away. And it's really when most of my problems began. And so that is for any of you in any type of leadership, manage, and then even if you have families, friends, if you're like kind of that friend that keeps all the friends from killing each other, or you're that family member that keeps every, like, OK, we don't have to disband. Like, if we're a family, we can do this. So like, just wherever you're at, like, um, you know, it's, it can, like I said, it's a lonely road. And you get, you get to hear everybody's problems, and you're not allowed to share yours. Um, but the, like the rest of us, basically I was having chest pains. And I, I was out running, trying to relive the dreams, trying to de-stress. I was up in like Willoughby area. I was living in Big Turtle 1 at the time. And I collapsed when I was running. And um, did like the 48-hour like, stress test, heart rate monitor. Did, you know, went and ran on the treadmill. And they checked everything. And I was talking to, um, I was at another like, conference, like a regional conference, and I'm, you know, I was kind of like opening up to this guy who was super successful in the management world in our firm. And I'm like, hey, man, I got this going on, I got that going on. He's like, oh, yeah, man, you did that? You did the stress test? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. Well, here's what you do. You know, you're going to go through it, and then you'll just be on meds like the rest of us. I'm like, meds like the rest of us? OK. So again, that was just his story. So not every, obviously, not everybody in management has to take med, meds to, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm assuming that there are some people that have figured it out. But you know, so like that, was, that was a big aha moment for me, where I'm like, what am I chasing? Like, whatever, you know, and, and, and looking back, like, yeah, I, I was a good manager. But my heart and soul was with the client and the fan, like the one-on-one -on -one being here with you today. Like, this is my dream come true. It's just having the flexibility to go out, talk to people, and you know, just in, enjoy life. I was not enjoying life being stuck behind a desk. Um, the seatbelt, so this is right around the same time. Big Turtle 1, pulling out of there. And I always say I was, I was in my success mobile, achieved success. My car didn't break down anymore. Um, and going to you know, the office where the success awaits. Because you know, 
success is only at work, right? You know, it's a joke. You got it. Um, but the, I realized that I had my seatbelt on, and mom and dad always said, wear your seatbelt, wear your seatbelt. I went to grab my seatbelt, and I stopped. And again, this is the James Schleicher who has literally nothing to complain about, who's achieved all the success he's ever dreamed of, and I don't put my seatbelt back on. And I spent the rest of the drive to the office saying, okay, well, mom would miss me, but she'd get over it. Dad would miss me, he'd get over it. My brothers would, you're like, you start rationalizing your insignificance. And again, it, I'm telling you this, as again, as a gut check for you every single moment of every single day is, am I chasing the right thing for me? Am I chasing that piece of paper? Or am I chasing the ultimate human being I was born to be? Um, so I'm very lucky. I was driving around a lot of safe drivers for a couple months. And you know, because it was probably about two, three months I didn't wear my seatbelt. And this is what I will challenge you forever and ever. Having a successful career, having a, you know, being that person for the community, but not being that person for yourself. Your life being a failure, and you're the only one that knows. And, that, and that's the reality. You are usually the only one that knows. Um, so Greg Devan, Infinite Happiness. So this is what I'm going to move on to next. So BFFs forever, <laughs> hashtag. So uh, <laughs> but, yeah. You can stay on this one. It's, uh, it's, right. <laughs> it is a good slide. Um, but uh, you know, I was, I was, it's a Leadership Lake County effect where it's the, the power of one day. So when Greg Devan said, hey, James, I need you to come out to this community event. And I'm like, man, I don't have time. Like, it was one of those like, terrible days at the office. Nothing went my way. And it's like, you know, I can't give back, man. I'm too busy being successful. I can't give back. You know? I don't have time. And so that one day, he's like, come on, Schleicher. Come on, man. Come on. I went to the community event, and I've noticed myself feeling happy. Like I noticed myself feeling good, for just for no other reason than this. I felt like okay. I feel important. I don't know why. I'm just standing. You know, I'm just at a networking event for a community organization. But I felt like I, the conversation I was having. They were talking about, yeah, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna help the community here, and we're gonna raise money for this. I was like, this is way cooler than work. This is way cooler than checking boxes for success. Like, this sounds like it actually matters. So another thing that I was waiting on was, well, I'll be a leader when I'm 40. Or I'll, leader, I'll be a leader when I'm 60. I'll retire, and then I'll go give back then. I was waiting to, I was waiting to give back. I was waiting. I, I felt like I, I don't have tons of money. How can I give back? I don't have tons of time. How can I give back? And that is one thing, too, is, is wherever you're at, you don't need an excuse to keep doing what you're doing. You don't need an excuse to give more. And if you could go out and challenge one person later today and every day, leadership requires nothing other than to lead. You go next. Um, the three pillars for Team IBB are life, love, and legacy. And IBB came about February 17, 2013. I met a random guy on a plane. I was flying standby. I wasn't even supposed to be on that flight. But he kept saying, James, you need to know why you do what you do. You need to know who you are. You know why you exist. And I'm like, I know why I exist, man. I go to work to be successful. Checking boxes all day, like, yeah, man. So he's the one that helped me identify that the reason why I survived the first five years of my career was because my family got taken advantage of. And without realizing it, that's why I was, would not give up. So again, be thinking about that. the first thing is, what have you lived through? So the first pillar is life. And again, a lot of times, what you've lived through is something that you don't share. The hard times in life is something you usually, you know, like you kind of tuck them away. And what I found was that the most powerful thing in life is sharing what you've had to endure in order to finally connect 
with other human beings that they are trying to connect as well. They're trying to get your permission as their leadership, as their inspiration, as their, you know, base, I mean, think about, and you're in this room because you want to get better. But there's people you know in the community, in the career world, even if your own I got a 14 month old that he looks, it doesn't matter what I've accomplished. He, he, I'm his guy, I'm his role model until, he, until he's old enough to realize I'm not that good. But you know, <laughs> it's a, we'll get there. Um, people are looking to you. And the best way to connect is just say, hey, I'm just a regular human being like you. However, I will challenge you to do A, B, and C. I will challenge you to follow your stupid dreams, OK? Love, who's it all for? This is something that um, very early on in my marriage, I found out that you know, working every hour of every day isn't acceptable as when you are a single guy. Um, but my wife said, you know, James, I'm feeling disconnected. And my guy brain went like, disconnected? What does that mean? You know, like, is that a thing? Is that real? But what's happening is, again, going back to my said, I made a vow that I will give myself 10 years to be successful. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, like, I will do whatever it takes. And for me, at that point, I was at seven years of my business. And to me, I'm like, oh, three more years to go. Almost there. Everything you got. La you know, again, my, my track guy, mentality, like, last lap, last lap. Give it all you got. The reality is, if I didn't scale it back, if I, didn't, if, if I did not um, start working less to make more family time, then I would have accomplished my ultimate vow and success, but I'd be there alone. So when you're painting the picture of your perfect world, like so you, you got that ultimate moment that you've been fighting your whole life for. All of you are in this room because you can see it. You're here because you saw yourself here before you actually were. Does that make sense? You guys are able to see the future. That's pretty cool. That's what leaders do. My challenge to you is when you are looking at that picture of yourself, who's standing next to you? Who's with you? And I almost completely, completely, completely miss that. So I almost had all the success, was f happy doing the community things, but missed, missed the true essence of it all. Does that make sense? Maybe? All right, cool. So who's it all for? Last thing, Leslie, how do you want to be remembered? And this is something that uh, I've heard it before, like you need to write your own eulogy. So again, super dark, really you know, like, oh, come on, man. Let's not do that. Um, but I. The challenge that was presented to me was, James, it's not going to be, oh, you were, you were CEO of X, or you were you know, manager of the year at Y, and 20 years, you know, 20 years of service to the organization. You know, here's, here's, your, here, here's your coffee mug. Happy retirement. You know, so for me, I'm very dedicated in my community very dedicated to my work, very dedicated to my business. However, when it's all said and done, I am here to be three things, husband, father, friend. And that includes to you. Because I figure my business will be a success if I'm a good friend to people. My family, if I'm a friend to my family, even when I don't want to be sometimes, um, things will work out. And then in the community, so much of the community suffers because of disingenuine people doing disingenuine things, again, because it looks good. Because they, they have it in their mind that, I'm just going to do this for my resume. Okay. So my challenge to you, again, is be remembered for who you are, for real, and for doing what you are actually passionate about. And not because someone else said to do it, because you, you know you were born to be that. All right, next. Who should be here? I want you to really, really, really think about that. Who should be 
in this room, having these conversations that you're having, impacting the community like you're impacting the community. And it's hard because when I'm asked this question, just last week, our CEO is asking, hey, we need, we need more great people. You know, get more people in the room. Get more leaders in the room. And for a while, I was like, well, that's kind of so, like, why am I not good enough? Or like, you know, why, or why, why, you know, why am I forcing people to be leaders? But I would not be standing here with you today had Greg Devan not given up on me. If he gave up on me, I don't want to know where I'd be. I truly, truly don't. So a lot of the people that should be here, connect with them, because you have no idea what's going on inside them. All right? And it's way more fun when you get to hang out with your friends in the community. All right? So um, there is one poem. It was hanging in my grandfather's office. My grandfather was like, that was kind of like my, my, my ultimate uh, hero, my, the ultimate leader that he, wa you know, he was, um, worked at Parker Hannafin his whole life, you know, was, was uh, a manager on the ground floor. And just they called him the Pope because he would just sit and listen and hear all their problems. And he would just kind of give them like a real quick one-liner antidote. And they'd be like, it would like change my life. It would be, you know, but, uh, um, but he just never complained. And he was always the first person to lead. And after he passed away, that was a huge, huge, uh, it hurt me a lot. Um, but he had this poem by Ralph Waldo Emerson hanging in there. And I have it hanging in my office now. And so when you're talking about that power of one person um, and that power, you know, what, what is your mantra? What, what is the one liner that gets you through everything? And the closing lines of that poem is to know one life has breathed easier because you lived. This is to have succeeded. So I hope that your life hopefully is a little bit easier because this goofball got up here and shared his story with you. And I don't care what anybody else says. You are the best of the best. And you are the next big thing. You are already the next big thing. But uh, so keep it going. And I dare you to love people always. And I dare you to keep working hard. That's all I got. So the, the actual, Greg Devan was recruiting me for United Way Young Leaders. Um, that was, I was on kind of like the ground floor when we created our Young Leader Board of Directors or whatever. Um, and that's been a lot of fun. I was networking director for the Cleveland 2030 Club downtown. Um, and that kind of like got my feet wet. And I was like, well, I'm serving on a board. I'm doing a lot of networking. But like, why am I not doing this in my own backyard? Like, why am I not doing this with the people that I actually want to hang out with? Um, so, um, that fuel is awesome. Uh, the one thing I am very, very proud of is that um, throughout the last few years, it, like you know, young leaders in United Way started working together with fuel. Um, and don't feel bad if fuel is more your style. It's more your style. If young leaders more your, you know, don't go against what comes natural for you and what, what you're passionate about. Um, and then two. You know, there's all kind. I mean, there's all kinds of so everything. Young leaders to get involved with either of those programs, they could. Um, young leaders is through United Way and Fuel. It's through the Lake County Chambers of Commerce. And they so, have like a Facebook page and. A, yeah. So, are, do any of you belong to the chamber? Um, or any I'm of the? On the steering committee for Fuel. Oh. Okay. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> Talk to her. So there you go. Talk to her. Okay. <laughs> this Thursday we are going to be at Lake County Yacht Club Drinks for Dogs. It's a Humane Society. Thank you. I'm on the board for the Humane Society, so thank you. So also help the Humane Society. So, but uh, um, no, that, talk to her. You know, and it, and so my, I, that's the thing is it always it always feels like well I want to get involved, but it seems so far like I don't know anybody, and then here she, is. you know what I mean, and you're but also too when you're on that steering committee like oh, I can't find people to join right there right so it's all good it's all good you've all you've all been. You've been sold. All right, cool. All right, thank, you. The, thank you. Thank you. What does IBG do? What do you do so, yeah, so I've been.
No, that's a very good question. Um, so the uh, we do we do financial planning. Um, and then that's how my family got screwed over. It was on we, the accountant and the advisor my mom inherited when she bought a daycare, um, and I didn't know anything about it. But I started to under, you know, started my career, started understanding how things were going, and realized we we're getting screwed over. So like that's there's a, there's finances like smoke and mirrors galore. It's just kind of like um, it's like going to get your oil changed, and they like they're like, oh look at this over here, all right, and they don't change your oil, and they're like, that'll be three thousand dollars, you know. So um, so that's been. That, start, that was kind of our foundation, and now we have clients that have asked to be like their business coaches, their um, life coaches. We do like different, we're starting to do different like seminars and workshops um, on whether it's growing your career, growing your business, or growing your life. And that's what I found was the better I got as a person, everything else grew as well. You know, so, um, but uh, yeah, thank you for that. So we got a team. Yeah. Oh, they're totally, yeah, so my investment, yeah, for my investment license, yeah, so I am not allowed, so such a, such a wild world, and uh, um, I cannot promote what I do financially on social media and all that stuff, so, but yeah, the team I beat, really, it's just, it's become kind of our, our community mission, our community, it's, it's been kind of a, so it's become its own cause, um, where we really, I mean, we try to give back. My, my thing that I, I tell my team all the time is we do not deserve any business unless we've given it back first. Unless we, I only want our clients coming in from what we've given to the community. Uh, and I, it's, it's been cool because again, we talk about like fuel, young leaders, all, just get started on one thing. And again, if like the steering committee, if that's your thing, do that. If it's not your thing, Run away, because that was that was a kind of a trap that I got caught in with the Cleveland 2030 Club. Is like, okay, I can network, but every board meeting had nothing to do with networking. We were talking about like picking out like uh, centerpieces and tablecloths for our 10-year anniversary, and I'm just like, I'm not the guy. And my wife will tell you, like, I she yelled at me quite a bit. When we were planning our wedding. Like, I'm like, like I have no input on centerpieces. I'm not good at it, you know. So, but the um, start there, and the next thing you know, you will like. That's been too a big reason why we've I, we are growing our team is because I don't want to say no to the community. You know, we actually have a community coordinator that helps us. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's cool. July thirteenth is our second annual Go Lake County Golf Outing. If you whether you golf or not, <laughs> uh, but the the proceeds are going to AWT. Anybody heard of AWT before? So it's the Alliance for Working Together. So it's all the manufacturers in Lake County. Um, manu the manufacturing world is a very, very important piece to Lake County. So um, again, we, the money doesn't go to us, but we just put it on. I don't golf either. So even if you want to just come hang out, um, we'd love to have you. So Great. Thank very you. good. All right.